Our guest this morning is a professor in nephrology from Monash Health Department, one of the largest uh, health departments in Australia. It's with great pleasure I'd like to introduce Professor Mr. Peter Kerr in our studios this morning. Good morning and welcome to the program. Good morning, Hilary, and thank you for having me on. Uh, doctor, let me thank you for the advice you gave us on the previous program and uh, you're giving your valuable time for us to talk about uh, uh, dialysis and kidney transplant. Now, when you talk about uh, dialysis, uh, what, what are the, what are the, what are, what's the procedure on uh, dialysis? So, first of all, I suppose the question is who needs dialysis? Yeah, right. A and basically, dialysis is a replacement of kidney function to a certain extent. So, people who've got uh, chronic kidney trouble uh, with failing kidneys, once their kidney function gets very low, below about 10% of function, they start to get into the territory where they need dialysis. Yes. And if it gets down as low as 5%, they probably absolutely need dialysis. So mm -hmm. somewhere in that 5 to 10% yes. window is the, is the time that most people need to start dialysis. So dialysis comes as two main forms, one called hemodialysis and one we call peritoneal dialysis. Yes. So hemodialysis is the typically thought of blood dialysis. A patient will go along, be connected to a machine yeah. that cleanses the blood for four or five hours, three times a week. Gee, that's a, that's a long time, isn't it? It's a long time. Of, it's a big commitment. Yeah. The problem is if your kidneys don't work at all, mm. you can't afford to even skip one dialysis. Is that right? You won't survive. My gosh. Um, so, so it's very critical treatment yeah. for these people. One of the problems for them is... To get the blood, we have to put needles in their arm. Yeah. They're big needles because we need big blood flow. Yeah. Uh, so that's uncomfortable for them to put the needles mm. in. Um, but other than that, the nurses on the whole do the dialysis for them uh, and they can watch television, work on their computers, go to sleep during the dialysis. Yeah. Uh, so three times a week. But it means for most people going to a dialysis centre, having the dialysis and going home three times a week. Having said that, people can do hemodialysis at home. Oh, can they? Okay. So it, ta it takes six or eight weeks to train them up in the technique to do for themselves. Uh, and that means putting the needles in themselves okay. at home. Yeah. But it does give them control over their treatment. Right. They're in the, uh, there's no nurse comes to do the dialysis with them. We, treat, we teach them to do the dialysis for themselves. Mm. Most of them become very expert at that. They're yeah. very good at it. Yeah. And the other thing is because we're not locked into hospital-type schedules, people can do it at home in more convenient hours. So they, they often do it overnight and they actually sleep during the whole process. They connect themselves up and sleep yeah. overnight. Right. So that, and they're able to do longer sessions of dialysis. One of the problems we have with dialysis is that kidneys work 24-7. Dialysis, if we're trying to squash it into a small time frame, mm. is very unnatural. So having more hours of dialysis per week is actually better. So the hemodialysis overnight at home is what we consider the gold-plated treatment. Uh, what's the, how long can you have dialysis? So people can have dialysis for a long time, assuming everything else is okay. When you say long time, how many years? And, well, we've had patients on dialysis for over 20 years. Oh, is that right? But one of the problems is that people with kidney failure often have other troubles. Yeah. Given, as we talked about last week, that diabetes is a common cause of renal failure, a lot of those patients have heart troubles as well, vascular problems, the hardening of the arteries. Yeah. And so often that's the problem that prevents them staying on dialysis for a long time mm. and not the dialysis itself. Yeah. Um, some uh, actually before we go into transplants i'll just talk about peritoneal dialysis yeah. as the other form of dialysis that form of dialysis uh uses a tube inserted in the tummy yeah and the tube stays there and people run a two liter bag of fluid into their abdominal cavity yeah it sloshes around in their tummy yeah. for four or five hours and then they run the fluid out just run it in and out under gravity okay 
And the typical form of peritoneal dialysis does that four times a day, every day. Mm. So different to the hemodialysis, it's every day. So that's a pain for the patients, maybe, yeah, yeah. Uh, doing it every day. But it's also good because it's smoother. Mm -hmm. There's no peaks and troughs. There is a modified form of peritoneal dialysis uh, now that runs predominantly overnight. And that has some convenience, leaves the person free in the daytime. Yeah. It's a little bit less efficient, but it's not a bad form of dialysis. Mm. Uh, and so now a, about half of our peritoneal dialysis patients use the machine overnight, yeah. a little mini machine. So both forms of dialysis can keep you alive if you've got kidney failure. Yeah. It actually only gives about 10 to 15% equivalent of kidney function. So okay. it just keeps you out of that, out of that, that yeah. range. So the ideal treatment is a kidney transplant. Now, unfortunately, not everyone is suitable for a transplant. It's a significant operation. It's a significant rigour on the body. And so one of the problems is people, for instance, with bad heart disease may not be suitable for the operation okay. and the, and the post-operative period. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but for those who are suitable for a transplant, then a transplant will return the person back to having normal kidney function or near normal kidney function, certainly more than 50% function. Mm -hmm. So they feel better, they survive better, their general um, well-being is a lot improved. Mm -hmm. There is a downside to transplants. Yeah. People need to take a lot of tablets forever. Rejection will occur if you stop taking your tablets for three days. Right. Okay. So if, if you were a forgetful person with tablets, yeah. then a transplant is not for you okay. uh, because that's a big issue. The second issue is that the medication for transplants that stops the rejection makes you prone to infection and unfortunately also makes you more prone to cancer. Mm -hmm. In reality, we probably all make little cancers all the time, but our immune system kills them for us. Yeah. The immune system comes along, recognises that that's, that's not right, that's a cancer, and chews it up. The drugs we use for transplant, because they suppress the immune system, yeah. dampen down that process. So there is a higher rate of cancers in transplant patients. Now, that's not to say that every person with a transplant gets mm. cancer. Yeah. But the rate for uh, sol what we call solid organ cancers, like, say, bowel cancer, yeah is about two to three times higher than the general population. Mm. The rate for blood cancers, like lymphoma, is about five to ten times higher. Yeah. And if you've got skin like mine, good Celtic skin, <laughs> then the rate of skin cancers is nearly 100%. Okay. Um, the darker skinned people are much more protected against those sun-related yeah. skin cancers, and it's not so much a problem. Mm. But then Dr. Uh, Mr. Kerry Packer, he had a transplant, but he survived only a, maybe a year or two. Yes. Why is that? I mean... Um, he was older at the time. Okay. Um, and I'm not sure what other troubles he had. I mean, my understanding is he did have actually some heart disease, particularly after the transplant. After the transplant. So, so that may have been the issue, but I don't know his details particularly. Okay. Yeah. You know, Doctor, it's been very interesting talking to you. And as I said before, you have educated our viewers about uh, kidney disease. And let me wish you all the very best, Doctor. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thank you.